Oh, hey there. It's me, Amtrak CSX Real Fan. Oh. Well, not all of you are going to know me as Amtrak CSX Real Fan. Those of you on YouTube, you know me, Amtrak CSX Real Fan. You know, making the best Real Real videos on YouTube, of course. But those of you in school will know me as Brian Williams. That's my name. So, why am I here to talk to you today? Well, I'm going to show you Newton's Three Laws of Motion, Railroad in style. Now you're probably thinking, yeah, Newton's Three Laws of Motion, how motion. How exciting can that be? Well, it can. And you'll see that through these three videos. See, me and 2124 Reading, another YouTube channel, not as good if you haven't heard of him. You probably haven't heard of him. His name is Zach Blot. And me and him have gone together, partners in a science project, to put together hopefully an entertaining video and a video that would earn me a decent money. So, before we get started with the video, there's a couple things that I would like to say. First off, I would like to say thanks for Zach Blasey for helping me put together this video and for his part. Um, I would also say thanks to Miss Neary for letting us be partners for this video because it was a lot of fun doing it. And third of all, I'd like to say thank you to uh, Jimmy Sinkowitz. Um, he is SSNK79, I think, on YouTube. Yeah. But uh, I'd like to thank him because he drove me down to uh, Toledo's Union Station to film his first law of motion. So in this video, you'll see his first law of motion demonstrated by an Amtrak train stopping at a station, his second law of motion being demonstrated by two model trains crashing into each other, and Newton's third law of motion of freight trains stalling out of the brain. So, without further ado, I'm going to go ahead and you'll see the intro first. Starring in it tells you whoever's in the video. So, I'll go ahead and play that through, and after that, you'll see the video. So, hopefully you enjoy the video, sit back, relax, and uh, have fun. Here's our math equations for first law of motion. Um, this will be an Amtrak train stopping at a station. Um, we are going to use force equals mass times acceleration. An Amtrak train weighs approximately 125 million kilograms, and it was go its a average acceleration was 0.80 meters per second squared, which comes to be 10 million newtons of force by the time that train stopped to stop it. So that's about. 10 million newtons of force exerted on the brakes on all the passenger cars. Yes, and if you want to know exactly right now how much force that would be, how many Amtrak cars are there on that train? Approximately eight. Eight, so we'll take nine, because you gotta count the locomotive, times eight, because there's eight brake pads in each thing. And that is. Each brake pad has about. 13, that looks about 
You got the point there. 138,000 newtons of force on Per brake shoe. Per brake shoe. And keep in mind, brake shoes are only asbestos. <laughs> Alright. Well, there you have it. Newton's first law of motion. That's crazy. The box cars lifted off the track. Yeah, it's on top of the engine. And the tweezers is holding it up. <laughs> the tweezers is holding it up. That's just. I wonder if that'll look like in slow motion. That fix it. So, the second law of motion you've just seen was our train smashing in the tinfoil train car. Um, second law of motion is F equals M times A, and we are going to be solving for the force that that train exerted on the tinfoil box car. Gondola car. Gondola. Well, that was a gondola, wasn't it? <laughs> so, F equals M times A. Um, that train weighed 0 0.02 kilograms. We've taken that times its average acceleration, which is 3.33 meters per second squared, which ends up being 0 0.06 if you round it off. But actually 0 0.07. Depending on yeah. it. Newtons of force that was exerted in that car. But if we want to be technical, yeah, it's 0 0.0666, and that just makes it funny because that train totally doesn't destroy that boxcar. So, you're saying it's an evil... Well, okay. the train was evil for exerting that amount of force. Okay, so that about 0 .0666 newtons on a tinfoil train car. Well, that makes sense for what happened to it in the video. Yeah. So, well, thanks for explaining the math equations on Newton's three laws of motion for us. No, no, thank you. No, goodbye. Well, I'm going to need you again for the third law of motion. I guess we'll have to go find him. Hi everyone, we're here at the Elmore Historical Railroad Club and we're going to demonstrate for you Newton's third law of motion. The third law of motion states that for every action there's an opposite but equal reaction. And we're going to show you this law with none other than model trains. So let's go inside and take a look. Oh, there you are. So what I'm going to do first before we demonstrate this law is switch into something a little more casual. So I'm going to switch into another train hat. So we're going to take our locomotive here, and we're going to take it to the back grade and lay out. This grade will be perfect for simulating this law of motion because we're going to have our locomotive pulling a cut of cars. This certain cut of cars, if you will go ahead and show them the cut of cars we'll be pulling, is going to be way too heavy for this locomotive. That's because this, the way that the third law of motion will play in is that the weight of the freight cars pulling downward on the grade because of none other than awesome gravity will be greater, well, not greater, but equal to the force of the tractive effort of this locomotive pulling forward on the cars. So that's where we'll get to see Newton's third law of motion. So I'm going to set this up and we can demonstrate for you. Here we are at the back grade of layout and we're going to demonstrate the third law of motion. We've got Zach over there at the throttle and go ahead and give it some Yes. <laughs> so we can hear the engine grinding up the grade here, making pretty good progress. But then about at this point, it starts slowing down. And now, this is where the third law of motion comes into effect because the locomotive has stalled out on the grade because of the backward force of the freight cars has equaled the amount of tractive effort that the locomotive is putting forth. So that's going to go ahead and take it down. So that right there explains Newton's third law of motion.
Okay, so to better explain this, for anyone that doesn't understand, um, the reason that it is, a, it is harder for the locomotive to pull cars and stall it up on a grade is because of the fact that unlike on a straight level section of track, like it's on now, the center of gravity is shifted so the cars are actually pulling back on the locomotive. So what actually happens is the you know force of the cars pulling back, like mentioned earlier, is equal to the force of the locomotive pulling forward. But like I said on a straight section of track, the locomotive has no problem pulling the cars because the way the freight cars are designed is you know, have them rolling freely when the center of gravity is concentrated in the center. So that's why a freight train struggles going upgrade, whereas it doesn't struggle as much on a level grade. All right, so here we got our math equations for our third law of motion that we did. F equals mass times acceleration. So, oh, forgot that there, didn't I? Yeah. Anywho, so that little model train there weighed 2.10 kilograms. It was moving at an average speed of 0 0.05 meters per second squared. And when you take those two times each other, you get 0.10 kilogram meters per second squared, or 0.10 newtons of force when it equaled out on the hill when it stalled. Oh, hey there, it's me again. I see you're back from watching the video, and hopefully it was a good video. But before I say goodbye, I'd like to go over a couple things that we saw today. In the first video, we demonstrated Newton's first, laws of, first law of motion that uh, showed that the Amtrak train coming into the station slamming on the brakes and um, the math equation gave us the answer of 138,000 Newtons of force was acting upon these brake shoes. And Newton's first law of motion states that an object in motion will remain in motion unless acted upon by an outside force which these brake shoes would be the outside force acting upon it. So 138,000 newtons of force is a lot of force and it's amazing how these brake shoes can handle that much force. In our second example for Newton's second law of motion um, we saw this little evil engine, literally evil engine, um, smashing a tinfoil gondola car. Um, the gondola car, when it smashed it, we figured out that it was approximately 0 0.0666 newtons of force that the sucker exerted on that tinfoil car when it ran into the other engine, thus smashing it. It wasn't a pretty ending, so this engine was, you know, in terms of the size, was pretty powerful. Um, we also used this engine for Newton's third law motion, which demonstrated, um, you know, for every action there's an opposite equal reaction and that happened to be the force of the freight cars pulling backwards the engine was equal to the force of the engine pulling up the grade and we found that that exact force was 0.10 newtons so the freight cars were pulling at 0.10 newtons backwards but Move was pulling 0.10 newtons forwards just making it balanced and which pretty much means it's not going anywhere so that showed us this engine helped us with two laws of motion. So, again, well, I'd like to thank you for watching this video because uh, me and my friend Zach really put a lot of time into making it. So, if you, you know, watch it all the way through, I'm, I'd like to thank you for doing that. And I'm very thankful you did. And uh, so, that's pretty much it. So, um, thanks for watching again, and uh, we'll see you next time.